My name is Jordana. I'm from Lesbocini. I'm a big fan, so I'm so excited to be here. Can you please introduce yourself? I'm so excited to be here too. Thanks for having me. Uh, obrigada. And uh, my name is uh, Amalia Holm, and I play Scylla on Motherland Port Salem. I'm going to ask you the question. What is Scylla's best quality and worst effect? And do you have anything in common with her? I think her best quality is that she will always she will never hesitate to to criticize the status quo um the ruling party or person of her surroundings and also i i feel like she you know she she's a very loving person so when she has someone to love she will do a lot of things for them she'll give her own life for them and make sure they're doing well and i think those are admirable uh, features and to me this is all combined because the um one of our worst things is that she is constantly uh, looking to improve the world and the situation for witches and people around her, but she uses and she turns to violent measures. You know, I don't want to spoil too much about season two for those who haven't watched it, but you know, th this is a, a constant conflict to her. And I think for her to evolve as a person, it should be even more conflicted when she just before she turns to the violent measures, because I think she's smarter than that in a sense. On the other hand, I've never been in a situation like her and I have no idea how I would act in her situation. I might turn to violent measures too, uh, because violent oppression sometimes calls for violent uprising, so. And in the ways we're similar, I'd say that I, I do very much see myself being a person that could be drawn into an organization or a cult like Scylla is because sometimes you know it's just um it'd be good if someone else took the made the hard decisions for you and gave you the like the plan um to secure your own your own freedom and they have all the solutions and they have they show you the way and all that and so with the wrong conditions i i think i could end up in that so i'm like i think i'm one of those people um, that's very people oriented and therefore could fall into that. So I have to guard myself. Just to follow you know? the instructions and. Yeah, or not just follow the instructions, but like follow the ideas and follow if there's a greater good. Uh, it makes so much sense that we should prioritize that, right? And and I, I do want to see and believe in the good of people. So when someone has a plan, I, I do think that I'd, I'd rather follow than stop. Like, then stop it. And in that sense, I'd say that Scylla is more critical thinking than I am, maybe. I don't know. I think I'm a bit more of a sheep than she is, but that's hard to determine for yourself. So, so yeah. something like that. <laughs> great, great response. And about Scylla and Anacostia, one of my favorite friendships, what do you think of this friendship and how important it is to Scylla since she was more used to working on her own? I would say that when season two starts off, Scylla could not, she's not happy to see Anacostia at all. And she doesn't trust her a bit. Um, she's afraid that she's gonna bring her back to the army. And you know, you, she doesn't know what Anacostia's agenda is really. And that turns into a frustration when they have to work together. And then that later on turns into a sense of uh, gratefulness and respect to Anacostia when she saves Scylla uh, in that situation with Arsati in episode three. And growing out of that, Scylla and Anacostia, there's been so much time together that they, it's inevitable for them to see each other's uh, whole personalities and the humanity in them. So even though they are still very much the base brat and the dodger, have, who don't have much in common in their own perception, they find a common ground. And I think the tenderness, or it's not tender, but I feel like Anacostia is treating Scylla's relationship with Braille with such kindness and respect. And I think that does a great deal for Scylla. And you know, half through way through the season, they are having fun together when they're uh, on their mission. I feel like there's a big sense of trust that's been building up between them. And this is definitely new to Scylla because, you know, being a Dodger, she would never trust an army brat or anyone of authority from the army. And also she kind of had to leave everything behind uh, when she went into this spree mission. And the spree, other than Willa, I don't think there's been much personal connection and trust in the spree. She's been there on the job, basically. 
So yeah, it, it means a lot to Scylla to have this a new friendship. I love their friendship so much and the development was beautiful. So, and- I agree. Yes. How was recording that painful scene between Scylla and Rael in the first season when Scylla was being held and Rael was being dragged out with so many tears and emotions? Like, did it take time to record it and did the emotions affect you somehow? Was it difficult? Um, well, I don't really remember how, how long it took. It probably took like an afternoon or something, like half a day or a third of a, of a shooting day. But yes, that was definitely a draining day. Because at least what I do, and I know that Taylor does too, is that we try to to create these feelings authentically in our bodies, which you you know you, you use your different techniques to put yourself in a sense of panic and uh, desperation, and your body doesn't know you're acting, right? Your body thinks you're in this situation and that you're kind of like screaming and crying for your life because you're losing the most important thing, and um, and that that's uh, draining, <laughs> I'd say. So my body was like, we've been fighting all day. So uh, the, there was like a little, you, you know, when you're calming yourself after that and you're trying to tell your body this is just, it's acting. And we and could feel not, it. We're not in. We love that scene. We really, really could feel it. Like both of you, uh, the, the action and the emotion was really well made. Congrats. I'm glad. <laughs> and... How is it working in the universe of Motherland, like with magic and power? Do you have any tricks to make it more realistic? It's wonderful. I, uh, I'm always in awe of Elliot's, Elliot Lawrence, the showrunner and creator of this, of his brain and the way he comes up with new magic. Um, and I, I find his work to be quite original in those aspects. From the start, um, we were told that most of the magic, of course, or the work as we call it, is going to be vocal and has to do with music and singing. And so my, my trick is basically just whatever the tone is, I just try to make it real. Like I just try to, even though they always add like the cool sounds in post-production, they add it to our voices. Like the trembling. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> but I, I always try to to reassemble it. Is that the word? Yeah, I think so. You know, um, I tried to do it. So, for example, um, I had a lot of practice um, before the the one in season in season one, episode two, uh, and by the graveyard uh, when Scylla is showing Rael how you know death and life and death is not so cut and dry, and she makes the uh, flower, the death cap, come out of the little pigeon that was reworked a couple of times but I remember it was all about like trying to get it to sound like an old sacral uh thing from the middle ages kind of like Italy middle ages just tr trying to make it sound like it was from uh, from the church and then it was kind of changed afterwards but I, I to me personally because the question was how do I make it feel real right well, yeah, I always try to just make the sound come from within me. I don't know if it really sounds good, but it helps me to believe in it. I <laughs> believe that I'm doing it. I love that the, the songs like Sarah Alder's songs, Adele, like it's really different. I love yeah. seeing that. And if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Hmm, I think flying, being able to fly or being invisible. Yeah, good. invisible, not invincible. I would what like you? to choose teletransport, like oh, to yeah. be able to go anywhere in the world because I love traveling yeah. or to know all the languages in the world. Like I know you speak four. I also speak four. And I yeah. What languages? Uh, Portuguese, English, French and learning Italian. And I, will, I would also learn, uh, would like to learn Spanish. Wow. Four or five. But do you speak the, the most difficult ones, I think? You know, yeah, but um, you probably, with your Portuguese, you probably have, like, it's going to be easier, easier for you to learn. Like Italian, them. French, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and with my Swedish, it's easier to learn Norwegian and German because they're all from the same language root or tree yes. or whatever it's called. Yeah. And would so, you like to learn other one, like different, a Latin, maybe? 
Yeah, I think I think Spanish um, is probably the one because I think I hear that's the one I hear the most around me. And I have some like in-law family or married family from there. And yeah, I, I feel like that would be my next one. But I would also love to learn Russian, something like completely different. Me with uh, Asian languages, like I would also like to learn that. So till I started the show as a villain, but quickly became one of the favorite characters, especially by the Brazilians. Like she wins every poll. Every oh, really? Time. Yes, in Brazil, she's oh. one of the favorites. Obrigada. <laughs> did you ever thought she would be so popular? Like in the beginning, did you think she would be like hated? Why did you think she captivated so many people? Uh, maybe. I, I love playing so I think she's a wonderful character. I love um, sensing her naivete and her fighting spirit and the way she just wants to do good, the way she wants and needs love, but it's a little tricky for her to, to get there and all the obstacles. And I don't know, maybe people just like the way she handles obstacles. And also, you know, because the reason I like Scylla or not the reason, the one of the biggest reasons is that I like her sassiness when it comes to authority and the way she just sometimes just speaks without before thinking. And um, maybe that's something we want to see more of. Maybe um, many of the Brazilian fans, just like me, we feel like uh, we should do a little bit more of that, you know, stand up a little bit more against authorities. And we like, maybe that's why we like to see that in Scylla. I love her, like, she's one of my favorite ones in the show, so. And if you could play any other character, who would it be? You know, I've had this question before, and I think I've, I've said General Alder and Abigail Bellwether, because they're almost like the opposite of Scylla. They're all about maintaining authority and, and maintain, maintaining the status quo, and they're not against the military system, and they're not pacifists in any way which I do believe that still is like her, her goal is a pacifist um, and peaceful life and society. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stick with those. So General Alder, Abigail Bellwether, just because of the challenge. Me, I would also her. play Alder. And yeah. Yes, I think she's really amazing and like power. Like, I think I would, would really love to, to be her. So you have uh, the, you have the hair for it. You have as beautiful It's really hair big, as my hair. <laughs> Like, oh my God, look how much. Oh, but that's, that's perfect general older hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> like to do the, the different hairstyles would be amazing. Yeah. What do you like most about Hyla's relationship? And how do you feel about being part of a couple in a show that with a good uh, LGBTQ representation? That's something that's hard to fight it on TV. It's an honor. It's, um, it's a wonderful relationship to portray. You know, um, I've been portraying hetero and queer relationships before, and that's not really the point, um, you know, when it comes to the acting, acting of it. All that matters for it to be a fun part and a fun on-screen relationship is that you believe in the love they have and share. And, you know, there's so many unbelievable heterosexual couples on screen where you're like, or is the chemistry or why would they be interested in each other and so um i feel like this is this is good representation in the sense that i find it believable i i really do think that they are like two entities that are longing for each other so i love it i love their relationship like it's really the development and the affection is really beautiful to see this one was like everybody was asking me to, to do it in Celtic culture, that there is an unlikely love story between the goddess Morgan, warrior goddess, and the king god Agba. How do you see this balance between Scylla and Grail, like death, life, both for them and for the model and universe? Are we going to see more about this? This is so typical of the motherland fans. Like they know so much more about the Celtic culture and history and who Morgan is than any of us. Uh, there should, yeah. Um, so I, I didn't know there was that direct connection. Um, and I don't know anything really about season three. So I don't know what we're going to see more of. Um, but spoiler alert, in episode 10 of season two, Scylla and Riel are together. 
and reunite it, right? So maybe we have to cut that away because it's a big spoiler. <laughs> Do you But, like um, like this this balance between life? It's really beautiful. Yeah, I love that. I I love that, and I don't know how conscious like I'm conscious Elliot was about that thing about a fixer and a necro, someone maintaining and creating life, someone dealing with the loss of life, and how they circulate, and you know how the mycelium got a connection to Riel kind of through Scylla and with the song that uh, Scylla taught Riel, but then also she she was obviously expected from the mycelium and she has something to offer it that is uncomparable. So to be an actor on a show like this, it's just so much fun and an honor because uh, none of it comes from me. I'm just getting to be there and channel it and be part of it and read those scripts, which is so much fun. Uh, to see what Elliot comes up with and the other writers. Do you surprise yourself like when you're reading the script? Oh my God, I'm going to do this and that. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. This other one too. Are we finally going to see Silas Witchmark? Do you know where is it? Well, I was wondering if I should like keep that information to myself or not. Uh, but okay, here it is. I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> and I, I haven't been told, and I don't know if I'm gonna find out. Um, but if we don't find out in season three, I can ask Elliot for you. Oh my God, depends. Like, for, please, please have to ask her about the the witch mark. <laughs> <But> okay. <laughs> okay. Are there any scenes that were improvised? Do you have the freedom to improvise sometimes? Do you like it? I would say that we very much stick to the script in terms of lines what we say the words we use but there's often a uh, room to improvise when it comes to the action and the placement like this um the choreography of different scenes or the scenery and so you know there could be improvisation we've had some improvisation in season one for example you know with some lifts and some extra kisses and things like that that are just part of creating this dynamic um, in, you know, the main relationship for is with Riel. So it's mostly there, but also in my work with, uh, Diana Pavlovska plays Willa. We've had some of that, which is just on like, like, do we caress each other? Like if there's a hug like this, what would that mean? And are our characters ready for that? Or what would that, you know, because you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to go against the journey or that your character is on you just want to amplify it and uh not get too involved with it because there are some great writers it's a big writing writer's room and they put so much thought into all of this um but i would also say that you know we have producers on set and you can always talk to them or elliot and if you have a suggestion and i feel like they're very open for that um and especially yeah and that and that becomes obvious when we have some when we have day players that is actors who are there for a day or two And you come up with something together, maybe in the green room, and you bring it to the producers. And sometimes they're just, they love it. And sometimes they feel like, no, no, this scene has everything it needs. And that's too much or something. Because um, so they it's like, search the scenes between Ryle and Scylla. Oh, what's this improvised between them? <laughs> you were like wondering. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say that. Um, not many words. I, the thing is, I don't remember everything that everyone's been improvising to. So I just probably, I don't remember like half of the stuff I've done because it's just, when the scene is done, that's what the scene is. And you don't really remember how it was before. And then it's edited and then it's on screen and then that's what it is. So um, it's, a, it's a mixture. It's hard to say something general about it. Are we going to see more about Sila's past. Do you think if her parents were there, she would still join the spree? She would be like different? I kind of hope so, but I'm also very interested in the other characters past. I'd like to lo know more about like Tally's mom and Tally's background at this mm -hmm. metropolitan place and all that. So I, I kind of feel like we, we learned, we learned a lot about Sila's past in season one, you know, like um, in proportion to, to everyone else's past, but I'm always intrigued to find out more about it. And I have some ideas on my own. So, you know, in my, in my, in my world, 
I know a lot about Zillow's past, <laughs> but then, um, and I, I, I know that Elliot agrees with me on a lot of it too. And it's just, you know, whenever he says something that replaces the thought I had. And I'm like, did I ever think anything other than this? Because the way he works is just so on point. And about the future, like, what do you sorry, picture? sorry. Um, something cut off on my computer, so that's why I just stopped mid sentence. I just wanted to say but the last thing I was going to say was just that Elliot's work is so, uh, so on point, and of course he created this character, and he will always have the veto on this character, in my opinion. So when he tells me something about Scylla, unless I, you know, I can't even picture it, but I always can, then that's my truth. So uh, I don't know if we're going to learn more about her past. I would love to. Sorry about the noise here. And about her future, like, what do you picture her future in season three? Did you ever thought about it? This might be a boring answer, but it's the truth that I, I find it hard to visualize anything about Scylla's future because I know she has a future and Elliot's, it's, it's coming from Elliot and the other writers. I have, I, it's easier for me to picture her past because I know so much about her, but it's very hard to know what she's going to do with that. Like I know her characteristics, but it all depends on, you know, what situations she's going to be in. And for example, in episode, no, in, in season two, her decision-making was a little bit, you know, all over the place when she just decided to uh, take uh, Tiffany with her and sleep in Acostia and all those things. And you could definitely see, at least in my opinion, or you could see, I, I felt that Scylla felt a lot of remorse and worrying about was that the right decision? That was a little, well, a little too quickly handled. And so, so I'm wondering if she's going to get a better impulse control in the future now that she's with Riel. You know, maybe she can calm herself a bit. Learn a little bit of quietness from Riel, like Paige. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, Rael sometimes also just speaks her mind, you know? Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they bring out of each other now that they're together healthy. again. <laughs> yeah. The show has gained many fans and continues to grow here in Brazil. When, with the arrival on, of the show on the platform, it will gain even more. So do you have any message for the Brazilian fans that are coming now? I'm so glad you're you're watching this and, and that you like our show. Uh, obrigada for all the support. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just glad to, to continue this with you guys. And uh, if you haven't seen episode uh, season two yet, vamos, let's do it. Yes, this and, is, uh, is really good. Like my favorite one is, is season two. And did you see the petition to save the show? Like has 22,000 signatures already. Like the fans are really fighting. So yeah, we're really trying. I know you speak four language, like we said. Uh, can I teach you some words in Portuguese? Like they really yes. asked me to. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, Brazil. You know, I looked them up before. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. Obrigada. Vamos. Brazil, eu te amo. Eu te amo. No. Like, I love you. Yeah, Brazil, eu te amo. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. É, beijos gostosas. Beijos. Gostosas. Gostosas. Sua terrorista favorita, like your Instagram bio, Average from Motherland. Sua terrorista favorita. The boss has arrived, like uh, for Sila. A patroa chegou. A patroa chegou. Is the, the perfect phrase for Sila. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes. A and, patroa chegou. Yes. And another one, don't give up on Motherland. No, the system the motherland. Now the system the motherland. Yes, it's going to really cheer them up because we were really sad about ending in season three. We believe that there's so much history to, to talk about. So we would really love like having other seasons. That was it, like the, the actions, uh, the questions. Obrigada. Beijos. Obrigada. This is from Brazil, and a fan also asked me to send you love from Asia. Like, do you have fans in Asia? Thank you. I also, my birthday is on Saturday. <laughs> can you, can you? Your please? birthday? Yes, this is the best gift ever. Happy birthday! That's in two days. Yeah, like 22. Oh, 
Congrats. So that was it. Like, thank you so much for doing this. Like, the fans were really excited. We got over 200 questions for you. Like, really, That's, they were really wow. crazy. And it's the wow. first interview you made, like, for Brazil, right? Like, yeah. So we were going to post it on everything and <laughs> we will tag you when it when it's ready like twitter instagram okay. youtube but i want to say i want to say happy birthday in portuguese i'm going to write here to make it easier feliz aniversario feliz aniversario <laughs> thank you so much obrigada uh, very thankful for this opportunity thank you so much for reaching out and for getting this together and collecting all the questions and uh Thank yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I thank you for the support. I'm I'm happy you guys love Scylla, because I really do, too. You didn't know, like, she was one of the, the favorite ones in Brazil. Like, she, she is the biggest. No, I, I had no idea. I, I can say she's the biggest one. Now, this is down the motherland. <laughs>